Amyloidosis is a disease of protein misfolding where there are abnormal proteins in the bloodstream. These proteins, because they're abnormal and unstable, are very sticky by nature. And therefore, as the blood flows to the organs or the organ systems, these proteins will deposit into the organ systems and therefore accumulate in these organ systems, causing uh, organ damage. AL stands for amyloid light chain. Light chain protein is a part of the immunoglobulin antibody protein. This light chain fragment from the antibody can break off, or the abnormal bone marrow cells can make excess of this light chain fragment, which can then circulate and deposit into organs. AL amyloidosis is always caused by a group of cells going abnormal in the bone marrow. Having abnormal cells in the bone marrow is very, very common. Over the age of 70, maybe one in 10 people, or maybe even two in 10 people will have an abnormal bone marrow cell. Usually these are benign, it's a condition called monoclonal gammopathy of uncertain significance, or MGUS. In a very small fraction of these MGUS patients, the protein produced by the MGUS cells has got this peculiar sticky property and cause amyloidosis. In a very small proportion of patients, they may have true cancer of the bone marrow plasma cells called multiple myeloma. So about 10% of patients with AL amyloidosis have true myeloma, and conversely, about 15% of true myeloma patients have AL amyloidosis. The common organs which are affected by amyloidosis tend to be the heart. These patients will present with breathlessness, swelling of their feet, tiredness and fatigue. The kidneys. The urine can become very frothy because it leaks a lot of protein. There can be fluid retention, or the kidney function may become abnormal. The gastrointestinal tract, which can cause change in appetite, weight loss, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, or occasionally the nerves are involved, which can cause tingling or numbness in the hands or feet, or the so-called autonomic nerves, which supply the blood vessels, can be involved, and there could be dizziness or tiredness or fainting episodes when one stands up suddenly. These organs can be affected either singly or in any particular combination and therefore the symptoms will be dominated by which organ is most involved and then by the next organ and so on and so forth. We almost always need a tissue biopsy for diagnosing amyloidosis, which means we need to take a sample from somewhere which may be the abdominal fat, the affected organ, bone marrow, which we can look under the microscope and show buildup of amyloid protein deposits. Once we've seen under the microscope that there are buildup of these protein deposits, the next step is to type these protein deposits using specific antibodies which will tell us what kind of amyloid it is, as we've discussed before. And then we'll do a series of tests for function of various organs. So we'll do an echocardiogram for looking at cardiac function. We'll do a cardiac MRI scan to assess the structure of the heart. We'll do something called an SAP scan, which is a specific scan that is available in a few centers around the world, which can image the amyloid deposits in the internal organs. We can do a PET-CT scan which allows us to assess how the bones are and whether there are abnormal cells lumped anywhere in the bones. And we'll do functional assessments such as a six-minute walk test which tells us what the functional capacity of the patient is. So treatment of amyloidosis composes of two very important things. First is managing the symptoms of whatever organs are damaged. Once we manage the symptoms, the next step is to actually kill the abnormal cells in the bone marrow, which are producing the amyloid forming light chain protein. This is typically done by using chemotherapy with a combination of drugs, or occasionally with a bone marrow transplant or a stem cell transplant, taking stem cells from the patient themselves. The goal of therapy is to normalize the light chains as low as we can get them, which will result in the protein buildup stopping. The body can then gradually clear the amyloid deposits, which it always does. If the rate of buildup is slower than the rate at which it's clearing, then obviously the amyloid deposits will gradually regress and organ function will improve. 